Hi, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Rachel. We're two Canadians living on our 39-foot main ship trawler, living an adventure of a lifetime. We invite you to follow along as we travel 6,000 miles through Canadian and U.S. waterways around America's Great Loop. We had a really nice peaceful night here in Mill Creek and that's near Reedville and we are just checking the engine. Malcolm's checking the engine now and we're preparing to lift up the anchor and head up to Solomon's and it's another anchorage in another Mill Creek but this time we'll be crossing the line to Maryland so it's a different Mill Creek. Hope you're having a great day. We decided to delay our departure just by a little bit because the sun will be right in our eyes as we're leaving the bay. And as we came in yesterday, there were hundreds of crab pots. And it's really hard to see them with the sun in our eyes. So we thought we'd have just some scrambled egg and toast and then head out right after that. We had our breakfast and the sun is up a little bit. Just a little bit easier to see those crab pots. We're heading out with eagle eyes. As we head north up the Chesapeake Bay, we're going to be going by, right there, the Potomac River, which is a fairly big side river off of the Chesapeake Bay and uh, can cause quite a lot of current as you go by there. So we're, we're passing by an area just before the river now that's quite shallow and we've noticed a lot more crab pots here. So Malcolm is uh, paying close attention at the helm there. We're both actually looking out for the crab pots. Um, and then once we get past the Potomac River, will be closer to um, the next sort of inlet, which is where Solomon's is. Um, so uh, I noticed out here just a starboard in the center of the Chesapeake Bay, there's actually a, what looks like a big marker and a lighthouse. So um, I'll show you that as well. crossing over the Virginia-Maryland border, so we're in our 14th state, woo! We're just knocking these things off, one by one. We're uh, taking these states and uh, getting through them. This one is, um, I guess, probably one of the smaller ones we'll go through, but there's yeah. some really nice spots north of here in the Chesapeake that we're gonna stop at. Annapolis and some of these other areas that are in the north part of the Chesapeake Bay. Yeah. And, and as we go by this border, or across the border, we are next to the Potomac River, which is one of the biggest rivers that feeds into the Chesapeake Bay. It's, uh, we were in an anchorage last night and uh, we came off the water. It was a little windy, but really not bad. But when we got in that anchorage, it was flat calm. The boat did not move all night. It was a really peaceful anchorage. It's a very nice spot to stop. Mill Creek in Virginia, just out of Ingram Bay. Yeah, really good. For anyone interested in anchoring, I'd suggest that. Yeah, state will approve. It's a, yeah, it's about mm -hmm. 68 nautical miles from Norfolk, um, north, but uh, so it's a bit of a long run if you do it in a day, but you could probably break it up. So we're heading up. It's a short day for us today, relatively speaking. It's five hours. Um, we're going to be heading north again up to the Solomons, and um, we'll be anchoring again and probably dinging around just to, to see. We're going to arrive a little earlier today than we did yesterday. Today we should be getting there around 1 o'clock, 1.30. Um, y yesterday we weren't at anchor until about five, so um, that's it's going to be a better day today as far as exploring anyway. 
Yeah, yesterday we had to stop for fuel, so that added some time. Yeah. And we will be against the current today a little bit, but it won't be significant. And for those of you interested, um, fuel prices. We uh, picked up, oh, I'm going to say 160 gallons of fuel, and it was around $3.50, which uh, has been a really good price. So yeah. we couldn't resist but just try and getting every ounce or into that fuel tank. There were a lot of places, uh, well, a lot. there were a couple of places just before Norfolk as we came up through that river, I think called Top Rack, and there was another one, I can't remember the name now, um, that were about that price. And then as soon as we went into Norfolk, um, they were much higher, closer to $5, I would say, a gallon. Yeah. Um, but I was able to find one in Hampton, which was on our way out, um, Blue Water Yacht Center, yep. safe um, harbor. or Safe Harbor, and uh, they were very good pricing, and if you have a Safe Harbor membership, it's even cheaper, uh, which yeah. we don't, but it was still a much better price than most places, so it was worth taking the time to stop to do that. Now, as, we, uh, as we're talking, we're just moving the, uh, the boat north, and you can certainly feel, as you move, it gets a little, a little chillier, so... We've got our big coats on again, only because it's windy up here. And the temperature on the water, so we, in our depth gauges, we also have a, a thermometer that tells us how cold the water is. And right now in Celsius, we're looking at about 18.8 .8 degrees. To get, now, I, I don't know what that is in I think Fahrenheit. It's, 60, I think it's in the low 60s, low 60s, Fahrenheit. To give you an idea, when we're in Vero, it was about 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's so right. you can see the temperatures are definitely dropping. You can also feel it at night. So here we are, what, May 6th, May 7th? Yep. Um, and the temperature is very obviously crisper than it is. It's by no means, you know, freezing cold, and we didn't yeah. even put the heater on. No, we didn't need a heat on, but it was just, it was cooler for sure in the morning. And yeah. the, the wind makes a difference. So if it's not windy in your anchorage, you don't really need to put the heat on. You just, you know, a couple of extra blankets at night. It's nice actually when it's cooler for sleeping, I think. Yeah, just something to keep in mind as you're looping. You know, some people feel, well, I'm just going to bring sw swimsuits, shorts, t-shirts, and that's all I need. I'll do the whole loop. Um, if you're really going to get up and enjoy some of the areas both north and south, um, you'll probably need a little bit more than just a swimsuit, I think. Uh, well, in the river system, it was cold there, so we needed layers there for sure. So you definitely have colder days and warmer days, probably yeah. more colder even in some areas. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends how long you stay in Florida. Florida was lovely and yeah. warm, so was the Bahamas. Um, but, but even Florida uh, but has you, a few cold days there too, remember that? Yeah. yeah, and when you're in, surprisingly, when you're in the Canadian side, it will be quite warm. Uh, July and August can be very warm up there. Um, and, uh, you know, those that haven't been there yet may not believe me, but it can be. <laughs> we don't live in igloos. <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't ski, downhill ski in July. No. But the, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a really interesting mix as you move around the continent and uh, experience the different seasons as yeah. to where it gets cold and where it gets warm. But today is a good day, and it's good we have our layers on for this leg. When we get to our anchorage, we'll be probably just in short sleeves again. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just, you know, while we're in the Chesapeake, Really can't see much land. No, uh, we got land on one side because we just came out, but you really can't see much. It's so a big, it's a very big bay. It's a very big bay. We're just going by the Potomac, as we mentioned earlier. Um, if you wanted to go up to Washington, you can go up there. That's uh, a couple days, I think, to get up there. Yeah, that would be a nice trip. I think we're not able to do that this time, but that would be a nice trip to do by boat. Yeah, and and, and of course you have to return the same way. So. That's right. Yeah. And there are we can see a few boats, so mm -hmm. I think we can see a ferry. I, I think that's what it is. There's also a few pleasure boats, and we're on Saturday, so it's probably going to be a little bit busier as we go further north because the, the area is far more protected than where we were just further south. It's a very good weather day to be out on the Chesapeake, so there's quite a few loopers making their way up. It's nice and flat today, so yeah. we're, you can see by the video we're not bouncing around as That's much. That's right.
we head further up the Chesapeake Bay, the conditions are phenomenal. They are really, really good. Thank so calm and flat. This reminds us of when we went across Lake Simcoe and actually Lake Okeechobee. Remember that? Yeah, glassy. So, I mean, Very you, glassy, there's yeah. no waves. It's just the hull going through the water. It's you a lovely just sound. See the clouds reflected in the water. It's just calm. Very, very calm. Yeah. Good stuff. Really good stuff. final approach to our anchorage near Solomon's Island and we're just coming into the entrance where it's the slower zone so Malcolm's just brought back the throttle and we're going to ease our way in and go and have a look at the anchorages and see if there's any space for us there. We've arrived near Solomon's Island in the northern part of Chesapeake Bay and it was about 42.2 nautical miles today and took us just under six hours. Um, it was a really nice cruise. The water conditions really leveled out as we went further north and to the point where it's just flat and of course we're in a bay now so it's nice and calm here. Um, so we're just getting uh, put everything put away and we're going to launch the dinghy and head into town. Solomon's Island in Maryland sits around a natural harbor where the Patuxent River meets the Chesapeake Bay. Relatively isolated until a bridge was built in 1977, its location has defined its reputation as an oystering and shipbuilding center since colonial times. Today the community remains closely tied to its maritime heritage. The town attracts tourists with numerous marinas, seafood restaurants, gift shops, a scenic riverside boardwalk, a sculpture garden, the Calvert Marine Museum where visitors can climb atop a former lighthouse, board harbour cruises and hear occasional outdoor concerts. 